What's the word, y'all? NBA All-Star starters were announced yesterday, and everybody's trying to figure out, did the NBA get it right? Answers, no. Uh, they never do. They, they, they never do. We make this video once a year, and we always talk about how they didn't get it right. And listen, it's not necessarily about who were announced to be starters, because in my opinion, all 10 of the names that were announced yesterday deserve to be all-stars they deserve to be in the conversation for all-star starter but what they did get it wrong is the positions it's always about the positions man at this point in the game i don't know how we're in 2023 and we still pigeonholing each other to the positions the nba has been somewhat progressive when it comes to these things because it used to be two guards two forwards and one center we had to guarantee a center and then we went to that period in nba history where no there were no good centers Jamal McGlure, one-time All-Star, because we needed <laughs> we needed a center there. And then they're like, ah, okay, instead of making sure it's a center, how about we just classify the centers with the fours, kind of put them at a disadvantage, but whatever. They were really bad back then. And now it's the, the two guards, three forwards. I do believe that eventually it's going to be positionless because I don't know how you convince yourself that it shouldn't be positionless considering how talented and how good these players are. Because if Joel Embiid is certain in the start lineup for one of the guards, whether it be Kyrie Irving or Donovan Mitchell, I, I don't really care which one it is. He's having a better season than both of them that's gonna piss some people off you can't convince me that like a jason tatum remember we're not even talking about the teens because they're gonna have a draft but jason tatum can't be a pseudo shooting guard in the all-star this is the all-star game it shouldn't matter you should be able to run five centers if you want to in the all-star game whatever the most enjoyable is but i also do believe that uh a lot of people are up in arms for no reason i understand philly fans being up in arms because they this is their guy this is their dude uh according to nba this morning he was number two on the mvp ladder at the this moment you try to tell me that guy's not a starter but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter we know joel Embiid is gonna be an all-star this season you know what i'm saying and that's all that matters. Once it's said and done and Joel Embiid has retired, it's going to say 14. I don't know how many All-Star games he's going to get. X amount of All-Star games. It won't say six as a starter, three off the bench, two as a reserve. No, it doesn't work like that. You know what I'm saying? So I know he's he's frustrated because in his life, he always feels like he's runner-up, especially because Jokic has won the MVP over him two times in a row, and it might be a third. He's second on the ballot. You know who's number one right now on the MVP ladder? It's Jokic. So it might be three years in a row where Joel Embiid has become the runner-up. You know what Kevin Durant did when he was the runner-up every single year? He made it part of his brand. I'm tired of being number two. And he won an MVP award. Joel Embiid and, and who is he with? Under Armour? He's got to put out some cool-ass kicks and do a whole campaign about being runner-up and that's going to be the year that he win it but now it's not super important to me who actually starts or who's coming off the bench because at the end of the day every person you think got snubbed is going to be there the shea gets snubbed for western conference guards maybe but we know he's going to be there the Demontis sabonis or larry marketing or anthony davis get snubbed all of those players should should be there i can't say for sure because i saw some ballots from people that actually have like like votes and some of them to have Sabonis. And I just I just don't understand the conversation. They didn't explain it. I, I'm willing to hear them out. But I think that any ballot that doesn't have Sabonis as an all-star is not watching enough basketball. Not watching enough Sacramento Kings. They're the second best offense in all of basketball. And he is the hub of that. It's him. Anyway, um, once it's all said and done and we get the reserves, there are 100% going to be snubs because there are a lot of really, really talented players in the game of basketball. I am more, cons not concerned, but excited about one specific thing. I love this every single season because we only get to see the fan votes, you know, as we're going through these. They, they give you the three returns or whatever. I'm always curious to see who is respected amongst his peers. At the end of the day, it don't matter, but I'm always curious. So, for example, when we're looking at the Western Conference player rankings, the things that stand out out to me is that Larry Markkinen already has the respect of his peers it usually doesn't happen like that he was ranked fourth amongst four court players when it came to voting only behind Zion uh, uh Jokic and Jane and LeBron James so like Anthony Davis and it's probably because Anthony Davis missed a bunch of time he was seventh seventh but also Zion Williamson missed a lot of time I think the amount of time that they miss is nearly identical but Z is actively injured and made the all-star starters well anthony davis has come back but again i don't know when these were all tallied up so they could have tallied up the day before anthony davis came back from his injury regardless to see zion uh, larry market and Demontis sabonis get more votes than than anthony davis is surprising to me and then we get to the media the media look like they showing they love to sabonis it, it's just a matter of if the coach is going to do the same thing and i feel like they will it's cool to see De'Aaron fox get the same amount of player votes than damian lillard 
I, I mean, that, that, well, actually, okay, cool might not be the word, but I'm, it's surprising considering Dame is still lighting things up every single day for him to be tied with De'Aaron Fox when it comes to his peers. It's, it's interesting. Now, uh, the media vote is going to be all heavily these four because these four seems like they're league, leagues ahead of the, the pack. Um, when you're putting in the ballot. But let's go to the Eastern Conference because I think that one's even more interesting. Because the likes of Trey Young, who's still averaging 27 and what, 10 on the season, like he's still having a really good counting stack season. He is 12th in player ranking. He's behind LaMelo in player ranking. And LaMelo's played like three weeks worth of basketball, it feels like. He's behind Darius Garland, Jalen Brunson. He's behind everybody. That, and that that's I mean is it surprising it's notable it's notable I can't say it's surprising it's definitely notable though and now in the front court Julius Randle not having the respect of his peers at least compared to the others is surprise I mean Paolo Bencaro ranked higher amongst his peers than Julius Randle who's having a phenomenal season and the Knicks are good I, again, th things like that are, are really throwing me off. This is also throwing me off. Ote Abadji ended up with four votes. Kimba Walker ended up with one vote, and they had to point out that he played a total of nine games. And the Alexander Walker got four votes. So um, the players don't take it necessarily seriously. Chet Holmgren also got uh, four votes, and he hasn't suited up. He been fleet, course you know what I'm saying? Nice fits, getting fits off. What I'm thinking has happened is o uh, the OKC Brotherhood just start voting for each other because because they knew the only vote that mattered to them um, was for Shea. Keon Harris got a vote. Vet Kregi. I feel like people are just finding the most random names and giving them to them. What's the solution to this problem? There, there really isn't one. You're never going to get to the point where everybody takes these things seriously. Because uh, if I'm the 11th man in a rotation, why should I care about who makes the All-Star game? I'm enjoying my seven days off and go on a little vacation. I'm going to vote for my friends because it's funny. And, and that that's going to be it. Because I don't think these individual votes for Chet getting four or George Niang getting five really swung the pendulum when it came to who's going to start and who's not. One thing I think that the people got right over there in the NBA is now allowing this to be like the, the school ground pick them up games where they just point and LeBron says, I want Zion. And then, then Giannis says he want this person. I think that's going to be fun. It should add an extra element. But I could also see it like crashing and burning as well. So I guess we're going to have to wait and see. I think the real conversation starts once we figure out who the coaches pick because there are so many talented players out there that like Pascal Siakam, Julius Randle, DeMar DeRozan, and James Harden. There's a world where like three out of four of those players don't make it. There's a world where none of those players make it. So <laughs> there's definitely going to be some stuff to be mad about. Um, but this, when it comes to the starters, ain't it just yet.